Let's get started. So aloha everyone. Um, my hope is that this is not the first time you've met me as this is workshop number three, but in case anyone missed the first two, my name is Scott Nishimoto. I'm the executive director of Seeds of Peace. Um, so welcome to our third of four sessions in our peace building workshop series. Um, we're really excited to have you folks this Saturday morning. Um, and for some of you this Saturday afternoon, as I mentioned in our last uh, two workshops, uh, this workshop series was made possible from the support of the Nale Aloha Foundation and the HT Hayashi Foundation. So thank you to them. I'd also like to thank our team of facilitators who you've all worked with already and will work with again today. And of course, our co-founders, Dr. Kerry Yurosevic and Dr. Maya Satoro. Um, three workshops in, we agreed that we it's not necessary to read their, their lengthy bios again, but I'd like to take the liberty to introduce them in a more personal way today. Um, so many of you folks know Carrie and Maya as teachers and, and you know experts when it comes to peace building. Um, but I want you all to know that I've seen Carrie and Maya uh, really embody and practice exactly what they preach um, in the way they teach, in the way they serve the community, in the way they interact with their own children and the way they treat others, and also in the way they have um, mentored me through my parenting journey. Um, so I really appreciate them for that. Um, you're not going to find that anywhere in their bios, but I thought it was important to, to say that here. Um, they, they definitely walk the talk. So that's my short intro for today. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome our co-founders, Dr. Kerry Yurosevic and Dr. Maya Sutoro. The floor is yours, Kerry and Maya. Thank you, Scott, um, and welcome everybody. That was very nice. Scott, thank you for those kind words. Um, it's really nice to see everybody this Saturday morning, especially before the upcoming holidays. I know things are getting hectic for everybody. Um, so thank you for joining us again um, for our third um, day in our four-part workshop series. Um, we thought we'd start the, the um, big welcome poem is always really popular. And so um, we're going to start. I think there's never... Uh, it's always important to have intention of inclusion um, and a good reminder of inclusion, um, especially as um, we have lots of things coming up in the news that are continuing to cause significant divisions in our communities. Um, and so really being intentional about the way we show up, um, the way that we're inclusive. Um, so I'm honored uh, to welcome you all here today for our third um, workshop in our four-part series. Uh, we're so inspired by all of your visions and your action plans. Uh, you know, as much as we would love to have all of you in person, which I think is our always our preference, um, the benefit to being virtual is that we, we get to have folks from um, Argentina and from Belize and from Bosnia um, and from my be able to work closely with their team. We can all breathe in. Okay, and let's get ourselves centered. Um, if we can take a moment right now to allow yourself to fully arrive, allow the dust to settle in your mind Bring your attention to your body, your breath, the present moment. You have arrived, welcome. We welcome your excitement and your trepidation, your clear inquiries and your big question mark faces. We welcome your wide eyes and your open hearts right alongside your side eyes and your cynicism and your skepticism. You are welcome here. Your culture is welcome. Your ethnic origin is welcome, your race, your skin hue, your accent, food preferences, and all of the complexities that make up your cultural identity are welcome here. The histories, her stories, and experiences of your ancestors are honored and welcomed. We welcome you with all of the connections you bring in with you to the children in your lives, your partners, siblings, parents, the animals in your lives, and other loved ones in your communities. You are welcome here. We welcome your spiritual practice, your religious affiliation, your spiritual walk. However you hold that aspect of your life is welcomed. Your love is welcome here. How you love, who you love, and your understanding of what love are, are all welcome. 
We welcome you in all of the ways your sexuality has and is unfolding. We welcome you in all of the ways your gender has and is unfolding. We welcome you, we welcome you in your ignorance. We welcome you in your privilege. We welcome you in your grief. We welcome you in your guilt and shame. You are all welcome here. Your quirks and ambiguities are welcome. We welcome your humor and we welcome your silent contemplation. We welcome the parts of yourself that you're still figuring out. We welcome you in your roles as parents, teachers, school administrators, counselors, coaches, music teachers, entrepreneurs, activists, healers, caretakers, students, artists, and change agents. We welcome you at whatever level of mental and physical wellness you are currently functioning. We welcome your introversion and your extroversion. We welcome all of the experiences that led you to this very moment. Thank you for surviving. Thank you for bringing your ancestors with you. We welcome them. We welcome your sacred connections to the lands in which you were conceived, the lands that hosted your births and the lands of your ancestors. The lands that we are standing upon and all of the life that came before us, the animals, the indigenous peoples of this land, our native Hawaiian friends, family, neighbors, and colleagues. We welcome you to this land where we have prepped the soil for you to sow the seeds of your peace building leadership visions. Let your roots sink into the nutrient dense soil, intertwining with the roots of everyone else here as we collectively build our capacity to lead change. Settle in, welcome. Naomi, if we could please pull up the, the PowerPoint. Thank you, next slide. Okay, so just a, a reminder, the mission of Seeds of Peace, um, it's a 360 de degree approach to raising peace building leaders. We support and build bridges between families, community members and educators to share resources and develop action plans to strengthen our communities and improve our children's lives. Next slide, please. Aloha everyone. I thank you, Carrie, for facilitating that welcome. It was nourishing as always um, and made me and I'm sure everyone else feel connected. So um, now that Carrie has kind of helped us to feel and set an intention for the day, I want to take uh, you just a little um, further and uh, ask you now to close your eyes and I'm going to turn off my video and guide you through a mini two minute meditation um, to help you think about your purpose. Excellent. So again, feel your abdomen rise and fall, fear nothing, be curious, be open, rest quietly with your breath for a moment. Feel your breath beneath your nostrils. Bring that attention back to your breath fully. Relax, respect whatever arises. Think about this as your time, your time to release, clear, heal, but most importantly, your time to claim purpose, to find strength, to connect with others, to remember your kuleana, but also your many gifts. And what I'd like you to do is actually to think about the person you are seeking to serve and care for with your action plans. Perhaps it's not a person, perhaps it's a community, perhaps it is the land itself. 
whomever or whatever you are doing this for, I want you to imagine that being that entity, that place more fully. Carry it in your spirit and in your mind, open up, get spacious. And I want you to think about this person, this thing, this place, this community, whatever it is, and really bring all of your senses to attending to this vision. Imagine this person, this place, this thing, this community, happy, healthy, healed, cleared of violence, grateful, bountiful, creative, joyful. Really look with your eyes at the texture, the color, the shade, the hue, the shapes, the invisible spaces. Really feel with your skin and your hands what it feels like to connect, to serve this person, this entity, this thing, to nourish. Really hear with your ears, but also your heart, and I'll really hear um, all the needs of this person, this place, this community, this entity. Hear their song, hear their story, hear their wants and hopes. As we go through the remainder of this workshop and day, carry this recipient with you um, lovingly and with optimism um, and with an understanding of your true capacity uh, to make this recipient's world and life and very body more peaceful and sound. Thank you. You can open your eyes. Next slide, please. Thanks, Maya. I'll, I'll take this one. <clears throat> um, so this is just a quick review over our four-day journey. That is our workshop. Um, as you might remember, on day one, uh, we uh, focused on our why. We focused on the connection and courage, C skills. We introduced some specific tools and strategies. Moving into day two, our last workshop, uh, we took a deeper dive into the barriers and opportunities to peace. We focus on the C skills of commitment and critical thinking and introduce more tools and strategies. Uh, Naomi, next slide, please. Today, we are going to try our best to put the pieces together. Uh, we're gonna focus on more C skills, conflict resolution, collaboration, and compassion. And we're gonna introduce more specific tools and strategies. And that leads us into day four. Um, in January, I will have the exact date at the end of this workshop, but sometime in January, um, where we will be showcasing and celebrating our efforts at what we call our share out. Okay, next slide, please. So just a reminder of our seven seeds, and we want you to remember to think of these seeds in really multifaceted, complex, ways. Um, for instance, when we think of critical thinking, well, that is for problem solving, but it is also for compassion and understanding because it enables us to think about the experience of another and those ways in which their experience mirrors our own and ways that we can uh, connect in brave new ways uh, to um, you know, our community and 
uh, and, and be servant leaders and so forth. Courage, it's not just about the courage to act, but it's the courage to uh, persist down the long road when the destination is uncertain, when uh, supports feel meager. You know? So you want to think about each of these things, uh, not simply in terms of what comes up when you first hear that word or is in terms of its common usage, but dive deeply into each of these seeds and understand their multifacetedness. Additionally, we want you to remember that these seeds should be uh, embraced in concert with one another. There is, as we have often said, not much use uh, to um, uh, you know, commitment if we feel it, but don't have the courage to act upon it, um, and uh, or or compassion, right? So we want to ensure that you are seeing all of these seeds as um, uh, beautiful um, instruments in a concert or melody. Thank you, Maya. Um, I always love that the concept of the constellation of those seeds. And so as you review your action plans and you continue to go deeper in them, you know, be thinking about how many of the seeds am I planting um, in my action plans? And the more that you can plant, uh, the better of those seven. Um, so what can we do? Um, and I'm going to speak specifically to conflict resolution um, in the first video. So we can teach and model productive conflict resolution strategies. We can hold space and facilitate opportunities for... And we can show compassion um, through acts of kindness. So these are the three areas that we'll cover today. Um, Naomi, next slide, please. Thank you. The first one is focused on conflict. And we always like to say that conflict is not good or bad. Um, conflict just is, um, it's part of being human. Um, and how we respond to conflict, how we react to conflict is what makes it feel good or bad. Um, and what we like to always say at SEEDS is conflict is that one of the mechanisms by which we achieve transform, you know, transformative change. Um, you know, all of the, civil rights movements and you know, rights across the globe, um, we would never have achieved if we hadn't gone through difficult times of conflict um, and really hard conversations and difficult al alliances. Um, and so conflict's necessary uh, for change. And so how do we do a better job of engaging better with conflict and better with others? So the first video is, is around the concept of healing versus punishing. Um, and, and this is both in terms of how we work with young people, but it's also how we work with our peers and our adults and our coworkers. Um, are we really addressing conflict through a healing lens or are we addressing conflict through a punishing lens? Um, and so um, we'll start first with this video and then we'll debrief. Inhaling deep, exhaling out. I just start to feel really mad because I got that meditation. Inhale and up. Exhale and down. The students having an opportunity to meditate, it deals with them looking inside of themselves, taking that energy that's negative and refocusing it to something that's very positive. Something does distract you. Come back to the breath. Inhale nice and deep. Exhale and exhale, lift your head up. So rather than get suspended or sent to the uh, principal's office for a referral, they're sent to us where they can help, we, we can help them self-regulate themselves. I knew suspension was not a good thing. Sending the children back home to some of the neighborhoods that they have to travel in, you know, it, it just didn't sit right with me. And that's how the room came about.
So youth here in Baltimore face a whole lot of obstacles, whether their parents are getting locked up, whether their parents are abusing drugs, or they're not there. And when you're ever in a heightened scenario, whether it's anger, stress, frustration, you, your heart rate increases. And so if you're able to use your breath to slow everything down, you're not as impulsive, you're not as reactionary, and you're able to respond to whatever scenario happens to present itself. Sometimes when I'm really angry at a person, I, I do the um, stress breath and it calms it down in any situation in life. Okay, thank you, Naomi. Um, so you see, right, this approach to, to healing, right? And discipline, the actual meaning of discipline is to teach. Um, and I'm not, and we've really lost our way in terms of, I think, um, in terms of how we treat our colleagues, um, how we treat the, the kids um, in our lives. Uh, how do we do a better job of sitting alongside of them and helping them heal. And this is one of the ways um, in a school environment that is really, um, can be very transformative. You know, the last thing we wanna be doing is suspending kids who are struggling the most. Really, how is that helping them? And what is that teaching them? Um, and th they end up just having additional learning loss. Um, and so what are the, what's the infrastructure that's required to set something like this up? What, what are the policies that we need to have in place? Um, and how do we transform our work environments to become more healing? Um, something to think about. One of the tools, Mai, do you wanna say anything about that before we move on to the tool that we're gonna teach? No, not, I mean, maybe I just wanna add that there is actually a growing movement of um, sort of somatic uh, strategies and tools for post-traumatic growth. And um, lately I've been, learning a lot about embodied social justice, this notion of needing to um, heal our bodies and protect our bodies. And of course, the pandemic has highlighted the brokenness of certain bodies and then racial strife and, and violence uh, in, um, in um, the United States and elsewhere. And so this notion of um, you know, the the body as a receptacle and sort of mind-body connection is, I think, becoming um, undeniably important uh, in all work. And so we have to not think about work as um, of, of peace building uh, or social justice as ever being simply intellectual work, uh, or the work of hands or, or um, uh, the mind, but really also uh, the whole body, just as we look at the constellation of um, seeds, we need to look at the constellation of effects uh, on, on trauma of trauma and violence, and also the constellation of strategies uh, for true wellness. Great, thank you. And we've talked about how peace starts within, right? That's exactly where it starts. And so how we show up to a conflict and, a, and a, to have a difficult conversation matters, right? And when we look at the, these kids and I fast forward in their lives, how excited I get that they will have these tools for when they start to feel that in their bodies, that they know how to bring themselves back down um, and how to, to make those adjustments. And I, so if you imagine our kids as, as our future caregivers <laughs> and as our future staff and as our future community leaders, um, these basic but very um, difficult sometimes skills are, are, are so needed. Um, okay, I'd also like to share about movement healing, and this is in our toolkit. Um, so using movement um, as a way to increase blood flow for effective thinking and problem solving is also a really good conflict resolution tool. Um, and so when we're in a difficult conversation or we're preparing for a difficult conversation or to address a conflict, it's good to what I always say to my kids, get your yayas out um, and, and center yourself. Uh, and so, you know, some of those strategies could be, you know, doing some breathing exercises before you go into a room. There's something called fire breath, which is really quick breathing 
Um, and that one for me, I use when, I, when I'm starting to feel stressed about a presentation or public speaking or a difficult conversation I have to have in my day job. I do what's called fire breathing um, and it really calms me and it's these quick breaths um, versus those big deep breaths. Um, but I'm gonna also ask you all to stand up. We're gonna just show you how this can impact you. So if you guys can all stand up from wherever you are. Um, and if you can, if we imagine all of us in the room together, and I'm gonna ask you to bend your knees and I'm gonna ask you to put your arms out. So it's feeling a little uncomfortable in your quads, which is a good thing. Okay, now I want you to spin your arms like this. Okay, so let's just sit here for a moment and spin our arms. Okay, now I'd like you to go a little bit lower with your knees. You can do this sitting as well if this is too difficult. Okay, now come up just a little bit, but don't come all the way up, just so you continue to feel that burn. Now I want you to spin your arms a little faster. Okay, now you can sit back down. Okay, we do that exercise. So one, I, if you can put in chat, how do your quads feel right now? I'm just get a couple comments in chat about how your quads are feeling. Ouch, burning, warmed up, good. A little burning. Okay, that's good. So the burning and the ouch um, means that you're strengthening those muscles. And so in peace building and in conflict resolution, every time we engage in a conflict, we're building our skills and our muscles to be more effective resolvers. Um, and it's also just a reminder for all of us that this is really hard work. Um, and it takes warm up, um, it takes muscle building, um, and it takes exercise. So thank you. Next slide. Inhale. Thank you. I am Sorry, often next slide. <laughs> Sorry, Naomi, next slide. I often have to confess that I spent years as an advocate for youth and an educator and would sometimes be in a room making plans, doing um, what I thought was best on their behalf without actually asking the young people what they wanted and needed. Um, I know that probably many of you have done the same, you know, with good and full intention wanting to care for and um, love our young people um, and give them what they need. But really the time has come. We see in the climate crisis movements and others, young people participating at unprecedented levels and offering important and valuable things um, in movement building. We need to have real intergenerational duet but we adults um, need to sort of think about that phrase, nothing for us without us. We need to really bring young people in true partnership with respect uh, into the process. Now, there is a very deliberate reason why we at Seeds of Peace started with the adults who work with youth. The idea there is by working with the adults, we enable the adults who impact youth so immensely to have uh, collaborative principles, shared understandings, um, consistently peace building um, practices. Uh, and we realize that because each of these adults impacts numerous youth, that's an important way for us to see those ripples of positive peace building moving outward, um, where those adults that we impact together, work with can then impact um, potentially innumerable others. And 
uh, and we can grow um, this mandate and this mindset. But we also see the importance of integrating youth. So I'm very proud of our Youth Talk Back program and our Girls Talk Back program. And this next video is uh, uh, about that. Enjoy. You Talk Back has really uh, empowered me and given, made me think that I can um, spur change. Just being around, um, being around all these different um, students who share my beliefs and share my passion for their communities. It's nice and empowering to think that I'm not the only one who uh, thinks about my future in this community and my role in this community. And so I think it's made me more active. Being with Youth Talk Back, it's really given me skills, um, not only to talk to people, but, uh, and to talk in front of people, but just um, to operate as a community member. It's nice to know that I'm not uh, the only one who thinks about my future and thinks about their community. It makes me think about like other things going on in the world, it makes me more aware. And even though I'm doing a specific project with my group, I think that learning things from other groups just like broadens my knowledge, I guess. Even with this program, it kind of brings my voice more up, I think, makes my voice heard. And with other voices too, so as a collective group, we'll be noticed. What YTB has taught me is that it's okay <laughs> for one to like I guess reach out to people um, because for I guess for me even though I'm like used to talking to people and interacting with people it's harder to um, I guess ask for that help and be okay with asking for it um, and to know that there are people here to support you um, and that no matter what you do uh, you can do it well that, that it's okay to make a mistake uh, you could just keep going forward and yeah, that's what I learned from being a part of this wonderful program. Youth Talk Back has changed my role in the community by, I guess it gave me a sense of that I can make a difference even though it may be small. Um, it also gave me enough courage to talk with peers and to connect more with people around me. I've learned a lot of skills to be able to express my emotions more and what I'm passionate about and also my ideas. So without them, I probably wouldn't be able to do that. I feel more empowered to, to do things. Like I think I'm more self-motivated to work against issues that I want to see stop. Because of Youth Talk Back, I feel like I'm less of just one small person in the community and more like a, a person who can actually do make change in my community and make a difference with my friends, my peers, my school. Youth Talk Back has given me uh, motivation and a reason to actually make change and take action against things that I feel strongly about.
uh, such beautiful young people. Um, uh, Carrie and I were talking about how uh, emotional it is to think about them, their growth, their beauty, their bounty. So we really want to encourage you and I'll ask Carrie to, you know, if you have anything to add, but in, I think the point is let's honor these young people, their gifts, not just their, you know, their tech savvy, but their ideas, their innovation, their spirit, you know, and, and not only honor them by respecting that they have meaningful things to contribute as leaders, um, but also asking them questions and trusting that you can, you know, learn from them as you are doing things for them, you know, and with them. I um, have learned so much uh, from the young people in my life and continue to learn uh, about the um, many ways of, of being human and of being in community. Carrie, what, what would you like to say about that? Yeah, I think the only thing I'd like to add is um, Scott and I are teaching a, a course right now um, at Hawaii Tech Academy um, on innovation and social change. And you know, I think I'm always, for some reason, adults have a, such a hard time getting out of the way. And, and what I mean by that is they are usually much more creative. They're much more, um, they're less siloed in the ways that they think. Um, and they're more innovative. Uh, and so I think really focusing on um, giving them the time and space uh, to lead um, is really important. And then secondly, that they listen to each other way more so than they listen to us. Uh, and so the more that they can have their voices and influence their, their peers, the better. Um, so those are the only two things I would add. Thank you. And so one tool that we want to share, next slide, please, um, is a collaborative tool that includes youth, also includes kupuna, and everyone in between, right? And so this is called Future Visiting, uh, Visioning, rather, uh, Paint and Post the Future. So this is a tool that can be utilized within a family, within a classroom, um, a whole school, community, and um, folks get together. Um, you can have different stakeholders or different uh, extended ohana uh, envision the future that they desire. And then together, collectively draw, paint, write out um, the family, school, community that is wanted, that is imagined. I mean, we begin with envisioning our harvest in terms of our action planning, because again, we cannot build uh, and believe in what we cannot first see. Uh, and so this is about seeing, seeing deeply who is there, what is there, how are people problem solving, how are people sharing resources, how do people work with one another, how do people live, and really coming up with collaborative, creative solutions. Um, and together, you know, everyone can see, wow, look at us. We are um, full of great ideas. We have such creativity and there can be a shared uh, vision and, about which we feel pride. And that's the goal is to really get that buy-in and that contribution. And then you post this vision in a public space to remind everyone of what they are working towards together. So let's do a little activity. We can't do the full um, paint and post the future, the full future visioning, but we can get started. So we'd like you now to go find a piece of paper if you don't have one with you um, and a writing implement and take two minutes to write out to the next generation some words. Perhaps this is a letter um, to your recipient. Remember the activity, the warm up of um, 
seeing and setting in your mind and spirit the recipient of your action plan. We want you to now connect with them um, in the way that you will also um, as you complete your action plans. I'm so excited that you're um, rounding that process. But now just take two minutes to write out to the next generation or to your recipient, your vision of peace. Infuse it with a real sense of hope and your kuleana. This is what we want to give you. So write out or you can draw it to that next generation. Um, what it is that you want to give them, um, or it can be your, the recipient of your action plan, right? And if any of you are brave enough in two minutes, I would be so grateful if you would actually, if you're writing it out, put it in chat for us to share, okay? So I'll put those instructions in chat. And take two minutes in silence. Okay, just take one more minute to finish that up. And again, if willing, I, if you are willing, I would be grateful to see uh, your words or some of them at least in chat. And just take a portion of it. Okay, wrap that up. Thank you. And thank you, Jesse, for sharing and any others who will. Um, and I will go back to the chat to keep reading those that are posted. And um, we can move to the next slide, please.
Hey, thanks, Maya. So we went through a couple of conflict resolution tools. I um, talked about conflict being part of being human. Um, and it starts with us on how we show up in conflict. We then talked about collaborating uh, with our young people and co-designing with our young people. Um, and now we'll be talking about um, compassion and compassionate acts of kindness. Um, and compassion is fundamental to problem solving and effective conflict resolution. If we don't have it, it's not going to go well. Um, and so how do we strengthen our, our compassionate skill sets? Um, and so we'll first play the video and then do a, a quick debrief. We have a check down there on the left. Yes. Okay. Joe is gonna go up. Joe is gonna go up. Well done. Joe is gonna go up. Second basket down the end. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Naomi. Um, I, I can't think of a, a time in my lifetime where it's, it's been more important um, to be the instigator of connection um, and the instigator of compassion. Um, and how do we mobilize um, to do uh, exactly what you saw in this video, right? Is, is to reach out to the, the isolated, um, to bring together um, in, in unique and, and diverse ways and to heal from everything we've all experienced, whether it's pandemic related, it's the divisions in our country, in our world. Um, there's a lot of need for compassion and, and compassion results in deeper connections, right? And connections are what our kids need, um, especially now coming off of a very difficult um, period um, in, in the human situation. Um, this is something they're gonna have to debrief for themselves or reflect on for the rest of their lives. And so um, I want to share a story. My, my husband's aunt, uh, who is a kindergarten teacher um, and is now retired, 
uh, 12 years ago now, 12, 10 to 12 years ago, she was actually hit by a train um, in Wisconsin. She was trying to cross the tracks in her car um, and the track um, bars were broken and her, she was hit in her car by a passing train. She survived um, and went through multiple surgeries, um, went back to teaching kindergarten after being hit by a train. And we were having a, a conversation um, and I asked her this, I said, how do you reflect on that experience? And how do you make sense of it? And do you, do you use that experience in your life? And she said, what I recognized um, is A, every day is a gift as we all have experienced that. She said, there's also that my, my job and my role in the short life that I have is to make everybody's day a better day. So everybody that I interact with throughout my day, my role and my job is to make their day a better day. And I thought, oh, that's nice. And then I tried to practice that. And it is incredibly difficult to wake up with that intention and to for every single person that you interact with, whether it's the grocery store worker, the bank teller, your coworker, your child, your spouse, your partner, your neighbor, that your sole purpose is to make their day a better day. So one of your pieces of homework between this workshop and our share out, and we are actually going to collect stories, is to dedicate one day to that being your sole job. You're gonna wake up with that intention. You're going to think of every single person you interact with that day and what are you doing to make that person's day a better day? And what that requires is if that person's a tough person to interact with, it requires you to show up a little bit differently um, and to respond differently. Um, so that's your homework between now um, and next month. Maya. Beautiful, thank you. Next um, slide, please. Next slide, please. So, um, as Carrie mentioned, we like to think about the constellation of seeds and the symphony, all of it. But uh, we um, have here in this video an example of one of our Seeds of Peace workshop participants, a former student of mine whom I love. Um, she's a teacher at Manoa Elementary. And you see that Chelsea has taken her action plan and done what I hope will be um, possible for all of you. And she has layered into her, her first action plan, uh, a constellation of seeds. And then uh, because she has really developed her identity as a peace building teacher leader, she has done myriad additional projects um, that sort of follow up and scaffold and include um, that constellation of seeds in ways that are reinforcing and deepening. So let's watch this video about her. So in the beginning of the year, um, I thought that this was such a powerful thing to have as our classroom, so we kind of adopted the pineapple as our class mascot. So in the beginning of the year, I come in as a journalist and I ask them to explore what they think the, the secret symbolism of the pineapple might be. And so through vocabulary, we learn about the word hospitality. And what does that mean when you're a hospitable person? They explored and came up with that it means when you treat people like your guests and everyone is welcomed. So this space is our pineapple classroom and it means that everyone is welcome here and belongs. And so through this project, we incorporate reading and one of our first um, reading learning goals is character traits. So we explore different character traits from different books and then we come up with adjectives of all these things that we can describe to as for people and they give each other a trait. And so at the end of the year, they're not so much calling each other by their names, but more oh, I know I can go to so-and-so because they're the hospitable, peaceful person. Or I, I want to go to so-and-so because I need to be cared for and that's my caring friend. And 
So through that project, that opens the door, and we do an interview process and an art project that goes with it. Even just taking the time to trace each other's hands and reflect, empathize. Well, I'm sorry, am I hurting you? Is this, you know, to really take time? And um, whatever that introduces is kind of what starts the theme for the year. So whatever their goal is, how they want to spread peace is what we kind of capture. So the first year was a book. The second year, they created a movie and it was played in the cafeteria for like school rules and how we're gonna spread peace. This year, they wanna do a peace parade. So we'll see how that goes. We started with a mural that was a grant and um, we just did a project where the students wanted to share a holiday wish and a gift with less fortunate children. The kids designed a book and they all took ownership of a skill that they wanted to teach of how to spread peace. So whatever their idea was, they had to embrace it and teach the whole class. So every day there would be a peace leader and they would teach the class and the challenge was that everyone would do that act of peace. And at the end of the year, it became such a powerful project and the kids were so excited that after their book, they wanted to create a little kit to get other classes started into exploring these different acts of peace. So each kid brought in reusable um, jars and whatever they had at home and they put together these ki kits of a five day challenge. So the student said that peace is love, so there was a hug challenge where the teacher has a hugging clip and the student has to teach how to give an appropriate hug and then at the end of the day everyone stands who was given an appropriate hug or handshake and it shows how it's contagious. Um, peace is community, so as a class we put some seeds in there so the classroom had to go outside and all together plant a seed and with that plant a dream. Peace is friendship, so on Fridays there was a pack of post-its in the peace kit. On Fridays every student would choose a name out of a hat and they'd give a compliment and leave it on their desk secretly. Peace is new friendship, so the students handmade friendship bracelets and gave enough in the kit for the class so that each classroom had to go to a different grade level and make a new friend and actually hand tie it to symbolize that new friendship. And so through these peace kits, they actually wrote a how-to writing piece, that's one of our standards, how to use the peace kit. And each day, the last month of school, after we introduced the peace kits, each of our kids adopted a class and went and read their how to use the peace kit and gave the gift. And the last month of school, they went on the intercom and it was the challenge each day. Um, they each read their page of the book, but then on the last week of school, the five days of the kit, the whole school was doing the acts of peace. And it was such a way to end the school year and for these first graders to influence the other grades was really amazing. At this young age, incorporating social emotional learning into our everyday routine is the most powerful practice because not only do they come to school to learn, but they come to school to really work together and to thrive. And now you can see we're learning these 21st century learning skills. It's all about collaborating and working together and listening to each other and building off of each other's ideas. So I realized that when kids have a connection to their classroom, to their teacher, to their space. They're so much more dedicated that the learning just comes naturally because they want to be here. It's not so much of a challenge. And in the beginning of the year, the challenges that we had turned into the strengths where kids were helping each other without being asked to, offering this, um, collaborating, doing the belly breathe, telling me, oh, now's a good time to do the belly breathe, Mrs. Billiman. You know, I, I, we, we have a lot going on. And, just when they start to teach me and teach their parents and it becomes this routine, that's when you're just, you know, wow. And um, when they take time, when you see them in the corner talking out something that maybe hurt their feelings, but instead of coming to me, they can, they have these skills to speak their mind, to empathize, to listen. Um, that's truly rewarding.
so beautiful. And you can see um, in that video, the, the layering of critical thinking as they think about their definitions of peace, as they think about how to, you know, what peace means to them. You can see ample amounts of courage as they meet new friends and, you know, and, and reach across and share themselves. And um, you see conflict resolution as they um, think about their responsibility to one another and, and heal hurts and you know so forth so compassion commitment collaboration connection adding um to all of uh what they did and and um it continues still um there is a beautiful ripple effect and the sea of creativity um uh, is uh, amply present as well so um we want to, to uh, really see, regardless of the space that you occupy, um, Chelsea's um, belief that uh, this is not a one-off activity. It's, it's a, and it is something to be done in concert with um, everything uh, that is done in this space. Peace building should infuse um, all of our efforts every day in our workplace and um, in our homes. And um, it is not just about this action plan that you're completing. That's um, perhaps a start to enable then um, additional and ambitious uh, peace building efforts um, from you as leaders. So Carrie, back to you. Thank you, Maya. I think I will pass it on to Scott to wrap us up.